protection of the rights of the Russian-speaking population. Russia declares this as one of the justification for the war against an independent state. But how did the so-called Russian-speaking population appear on the territory of Ukraine in the first place? This is the result of a deliberate imperial policy of Russification of Ukraine that has been going on for at least 250 years. The first suppression of the Ukrainian language began during the occupation of Tsarist Russia. In 1720, Tsar Peter I issued a decree banning the printing of books in Ukrainian. In 1729, his successor Peter II ordered all state decrees and orders to be rewritten from Ukrainian into Russian. In 1764, Empress Catherine II wrote in an instruction to her general prosecutor, Little Russia, Livonia and Finland, as well as the Smolensk region, these provinces should be Russified. But despite numerous bans and attempts to eradicate the Ukrainian language, people continued to speak it, so Russia took more radical steps. In 1863 the Valuev Circular was issued. This was a decree from the head of the Ministry of Internal Affairs of the Russian Empire, in which he completely denies the existence of the Ukrainian language. The imperial authorities believe that the existence of books in Ukrainian would encourage the growth of anti-Tsarist sentiments. Even the translation of the New Testament into Ukrainian was considered dangerous and harmful. The next attempt to completely destroy the Ukrainian language was the Ems Ukas of 1876. It is a secret decree of the Russian Emperor Alexander II, which prohibited the import of books written in Ukrainian from abroad into the territory of the Russian Empire. It was not allowed to print books in Ukrainian or make translations from foreign languages. Not even text and sheet music. Public readings in Ukrainian prohibited. Ukrainian theater performances or concerts featuring Ukrainian songs prohibited. This decree abolished the Ukrainian language in primary schools, and even teachers were immediately replaced by Russians. From 1917 to 1920, the period between the imperial and Soviet occupations of Ukraine, was a time of revival of the Ukrainian language. Ukrainian has been reinstated as the language of legislation, administration and the military. Numerous Ukrainian schools, libraries and publishing houses have opened. But then came the USSR. The communists were more inventive than Imperial Russia when it came to the Ukrainian language. First, they implemented the so-called Ukrainization policy. The idea is to allow people to communicate in their own language. In contrast to Tsarist Russia, this made the local population more loyal to the new occupiers. On the other hand, the relaxation of the Ukrainian language policy made it possible to identify nationalist citizens. In 1932 to 1933, the process began to reverse. The Soviet government stopped the policy of Ukrainization and reversed the persecution of Ukrainians. In the following decades, not only the language but the Ukrainian native speakers themselves were physically exterminated. During the Great Purge of 1937-1938, around 200,000 people were convicted in Ukraine. About two-thirds of them were sentenced to death. That is why the generation of Ukrainian artists of the 20s and 30s is called the Executed Renaissance. Dozens of Ukrainian cultural figures fell victim to Stalin's terror. The Soviets even went so far as to remove the unique letter G from the Ukrainian alphabet, because it was too nationalistic. But even this was not enough for the Soviet authorities. On 22nd of October 1947, they launched Operation West. By the end of October, more than 7,600 Ukrainians had been forcibly evicted. An estimated 2.88 million people were displaced from Ukraine between the late 1920s and the early 1950s. The eviction and extermination of the Ukrainian speakers went hand in hand with the Russification of education. Over the past 100 years, the number of people in Ukraine who consider Russian their native language has increased threefold. History shows that the Russians first force you to speak Russian, then they take away your land, your property, and your citizenship. In 2016, half an hour per week was allocated for Ukrainian language teaching in the occupied territories of Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts. By 2019, there were no longer any schools in Crimea where Ukrainian could be learned. During the full-scale war, more than 200 cases of linguicide of the Ukrainian language were documented 
located in the temporarily occupied Ukrainian territories. Once again, the Russians confiscate Ukrainian books and ban education in Ukrainian language. In addition, they are replacing Ukrainian television with Russian. There have also been cases of persecution and torture of Ukrainian citizens for using the Ukrainian language. It seems that history has taken a turn, and it has returned to the point where Ukrainians are being killed for their language. This brings us back to the fact that Russian is not the native language of Ukraine, but the language of the occupiers imposed by force. However, despite Russia's best efforts, the number of people in Ukraine who consider Ukrainian to be their mother language has risen to 84%. It was cited as the language of communication by 71% of respondents. By treacherously attacking Ukraine, Russia has destroyed the narratives of commonality between Russians and Ukrainians that it has been cultivating for years through hybrid methods.